What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Backlash 2020 predictions for you guys. As you know, the show is coming up on this Sunday. We have seven matches announced thus far. They could be added just at time of recording this video. There are only seven matches on this card. Not a ton of matches I'm looking forward to, but usually, I've said it multiple times this year even, that when I'm not necessarily looking forward to a show, they end up being better than what I previously had in my mind. So maybe that'll happen here with Backlash. Backlash, I feel like Backlash is always that show that sucks. Has it been like the past few years, Backlash hasn't been very good, or maybe I'm just making up-ish? I just remember that one year, for sure, Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns, I think, main event, and you had people walking out of the arena. But hopefully we don't get a show like that this time. We got the Universal Championship on the line, the WWE Championship on the line, and the greatest wrestling match ever between Randy Orton and Edge. So by default, this show should be show of the year. But how these predictions videos works, guys, I'm going to run through all of the matches on the car, breaking down what I thought of the few coming in, what I expect out of the matchup, who I think is going to win, and everything in between. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into my Backlash 2020 predictions. So starting out first, guys, we do have Jeff Hardy taking on Sheamus in a singles match. I feel like this feud could call for a stipulation. Maybe this won't be the end of the feud here, but Jeff Hardy taking on Sheamus. I'm actually invested into this feud given the real style elements they have implemented with Jeff's history, you know, with his DUIs and his demons that he has personally faced in his own personal life. Bringing that into storyline has been pretty big for me. I think that's got me invested in it. I know a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people, it's not for them. You know, they're kind of like, eh, I'm not sure about that, Brad. I like when they blur the lines between the realism and, you know, the scripted element, and I am invested in this match, and I love Jeff Hardy to death, and I think him and Sheamus are going to put on a great matchup. Hopefully, this is a redemption story for Jeff, and we get a good story and good comeuppance for him instead of him being thrusted down, you know, broke kicked in 12 seconds like Daniel Bryan and destroyed. So, hopefully, we get a good match. I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy winning by disqualification. Maybe Sheamus, you know, is about to get beat, and then he hits him with a chair or some ish like that. I don't think this will be the end of the feud. So I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy, either winning by disqualification or Sheamus. But I'm going to go Jeff. I'm going Jeff. My boy Jeff. Jeff for the win. Next up is the Triple Threat Tag Team Match for the Women's Tag Team Championships between Bailey Two Belts or Bailey Doe Straps and Sasha Banks taking on the Iconics and Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I am not invested in this one bit. I think this is just building up to the inevitable SummerSlam Bailey Sasha Banks matchup that we are going to love so much. But I am not a fan of the Iconics. I'm not a fan of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross together. And I think this is just a good stepping stone for Sasha Banks and Bailey before eventually losing the Women's Tag Team championship so I'm gonna go with Bailey and Sasha to retain and uh, hopefully they they perform better than I think but I am not invested I don't think this is going to be one of those matches that I'm looking forward to at all but I do think Bailey and Sasha Banks will retain their women's tag team championships Next up is our United States Championship match between Apollo Crews taking on Andrade. Andrade did win the Triple Threat number one contendership match on Raw versus Kevin Owens and Angel Garza. And for that reason, I think Angel Garza is probably going to cost Andrade the match. I don't think Apollo is going to win clean. I think he's beaten Andrade twice clean now for the championship and then in a rematch or a tag team match a few weeks back or something like that. But I think Apollo Crews is going to retain. I'm glad that he will retain and I'm, I'm hoping he will retain and I think that it will definitely uplift him. He definitely needs to continue this hot streak. He's got a lot of momentum. Continue the push here. Add another notch on the belt by defeating Andrade once again. Maybe it costs due to Kevin Owens. Maybe Angel Garza gets involved. But Apollo Crews will retain. And I actually am looking forward to what these guys can do again in this matchup here at Backlash. Ah, Christ. Here comes the Raw Women's Championship match. Asuka, my favorite women's wrestler in the world, taking on Nia Jax. And you guys know how I feel about Nia Jax. Probably my least favorite. So I have my favorite taking on my least favorite. And if history has anything to say about it, sorry about the little camera spin away there, stupid ass lamp. Nia Jax has been defeated by Asuka like seven or eight times in their history between the two. And I think we're going to add another number to that win column for Asuka here as she will defeat Nia Jax. I think Nia Jax is just a stepping stone on Asuka's way to Charlotte. I think we're going to get Asuka and Charlotte at SummerSlam. And so I am going to go with Asuka to retain the championship. And hopefully Asuka doesn't get injured in this matchup. But seriously, though, I, I am just not a fan of Nia Jax. I feel like just just, just nothing. Just just forget it. Not a fan of Nia. Asuka's the GOAT. She's going to retain the Raw Women's Championship. And that's the end of that. 
Next up is the Blue Universal Championship match between Braun Strowman, the Monster Among Men, taking on Miz and Morrison here in a two-on-one handicap match for the blue strap here at Backlash. And to be honest with you guys, I really don't even know how we got here. I, I can't even remember how Miz and Morrison started feuding with Strowman, but just seemed completely random. They were a tag team. They were going after the SmackDown titles. They lost them, and then here they are in the Universal Championship match. I don't even know, but here we are, you know? Here we are. I know they were spying on him and playing pranks on him and stuff like that. But here we are. Blue Universal Championship match between the two. Braun Strowman's definitely winning this match. I don't see them putting the strap on Miz or Morrison here. They don't have a ton of momentum coming in. It's not like, you know, they're going to take them all the way down after this or something. Braun Strowman's going to take out both guys, and it's just going to be another win for the monster going into the summer. Now, I don't know who's going to be lined up for him following this. There's not like this huge big heel over on SmackDown, in my opinion at least right now. So my prediction for this is Braun Strowman. He's going to win this matchup and I'm trying to think of who they're going to set him up for coming into SummerSlam or into the summer and I just am drawing blanks on this. I'm going to be honest, I'm not very invested in this matchup. I think that we could get a potentially entertaining matchup if they book it correctly, but we'll just have to see about that. But I do think that Braun Strowman's retaining the Blue Universal title and that will be that. Next up is the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley, a.k.a. Bobby Trashley, with MVP in his corner. You know MVP's going to be down there. They could potentially book this matchup correctly. You know, I remember a few years back when Bobby Lashley took on Roman Reigns, I think, at No Mercy, and I was like, what the hell? This match is going to suck. And then they actually had an intriguing matchup, a very big physical matchup that actually was very entertaining and it was the best match on that card and so hopefully we get something similar to that in this one two really big dudes muscular guys getting in the ring Vince's wet dream coming to life here at Backlash 2020 and I think that we could get a potentially good matchup out of these and hopefully that is the case I'm not invested in it I don't want Bobby Lashley to come anywhere close to winning I don't think he will I think Drew McIntyre does retain and his continued reign will go on as I think he will probably hold the championship until we get to live crowds, guys, because I think a live crowd is what uh, they're waiting on to ever even come close to pulling the strap off him, because we waited forever for him to get his moment. He got the moment at the Royal Rumble, and then we didn't even get to see the man win it in live person at WrestleMania, so I think they're going to hold off on him losing the title anytime soon, and so I think Drew McIntyre will defeat Bobby, and we'll see who's next on his agenda. I think it was supposed to be Jinder Mahal was supposed to be lined up possibly next for him, or even before Bobby Lashley, but here we are with Lashley at back and hopefully it's a big physical matchup. Drew McIntyre is going to retain and I hope that, uh, you know, we get back to these live crowds soon so that we can see Drew McIntyre thrive in front of that crowd and that baby face pop that he's going to get. Man, the crowds are going to be insane when wrestling gets back, man. I, I cannot freaking wait for it. But Drew McIntyre will retain over Bobby Trashley. And for the main event, the greatest wrestling match ever. Edge versus Randy Orton. WWE dubbing this the greatest wrestling match ever coming in. They got the promo package. They are billing it this way. They've had Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair and Kurt Angle on the show to talk about how this is going to be the greatest wrestling match ever, which is super stupid, man. Like, it's such a subjective thing to say. And, you know, anybody can say any match is the greatest ever. It's somebody's opinion and you cannot, you know what, you know what I'm saying? You can't refute something that's somebody's opinion that what they stand. Like, if I think Undertaker and Shawn Michaels is the greatest match ever, you can say whatever you want to say. But if it's in my mind that that's what I think, you can't, you can't change it unless I go out and see a match that is greater and do I think this is going to live up to that or even be better than that without a live crowd even? I just don't see it and Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels is not the greatest match ever to me. I'm just saying that's probably what a lot of people like to say and you could plug in any match up right there. Maybe Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston at WrestleMania 35 is, your, is the greatest match ever to you. But anyways coming into this I'm invested. I am invested. I think they've done a really good job in the promos and the peep show with Christian getting in there and we've seen multiple promos. I think their match at WrestleMania 36 gets a lot of shit for no reason. I know that it was kind of boring at times. It was slow, but the spots they did and the story they told and everything, I was invested in it. I enjoyed the matchup. Maybe a little bit long, maybe a tad slow here and there, but I did like it, and I think it gets a shit reputation for no reason, man. Edge came out on top on that one. I thought that was the end of the feud. You know, Randy Orton set out to ruin and, you know, stop him from returning and, and put him back on the shelf like he did for nine and a half years or whatever it was, and now they're coming back with this matchup. I'm not exactly sure what 
the story's supposed to be here, but are they gonna give it to Randy Orton? Are they gonna do 50-50 booking? I mean, I guess it's possible, but then it's like all that stuff that Randy said, is it true? I don't know. This one's actually a really tough to predict because of that factor, and for that reason, I kind of want to give it to Edge, but then again, WWE is known to do some stupid-ass booking sometimes and make it make no sense with no logic inherently, you know, with no logic whatsoever. So I don't know. Where do I want to go with this one? <sighs> I don't know. Are we going to get another match out of these guys? I don't know. It's tough to say. I'm going Randy Orton. I'm going Randy Orton. Edge won the first one at WrestleMania. Randy Orton will win this one, and then we'll probably get another match between them. Wouldn't even be shocked. Wouldn't even be shocked to the, to the slightest. But I'm going to go with Randy Orton to win, and this match probably won't even main event. I'm just plugging it in here at the end because it's supposed to be the greatest match ever, right? So you'd think it'd go on last, right? This is all the matches they have plugged so far for Backlash 2020. Guys, if there's any other matches they add to this card, I will pin a comment at the top of the comment section giving you my full predictions. I'm sure there's going to be one or two matches added. Possible Rollins versus Mysterio. Possible AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan or something. And possibly another match here and there. But that is going to do it for this video for my Backlash 2020 predictions. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. Let me know your predictions down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And follow me on Twitter for sure if you want to see me live tweet during this show. Friday Night Smackdown, Monday Night Raw. Any live show you want to see me live tweeting, definitely go check it out. You'll get my first thoughts right there on Twitter as soon as I see something. And I always put it out there on Twitter more, more than likely. So, But that's going to do it, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.